So, friends, this is uh, a beautiful day in Oklahoma. And uh, this here is the lake. Thought I'd come out here and make a little video for you guys. Thought maybe this would be a good place to sit while I make the video. Right on this, maybe on this big rock here. I want to talk about something that's uh, perhaps one of the most important things we could talk about. I mean, you know, as if there isn't uh, a lot of important things to talk about in the world. But, uh, let me get situated here. Looks like it's going to be a beautiful day out here on this beautiful lake. You know, uh, I think there's a lot of questions. We've gone through a lot of questions. We've tried to answer a lot of things. Found out that some of the things we were told aren't true. A lot of the things that we were told aren't true. But because of YouTube today, there's a lot of, uh, I think, stuff going around. And, you know, I can't blame people for doubting a lot of things and going back and trying to understand if, well, if we're told all these lies, what really is the truth? And, you know, how about, all right, so maybe the Bible's not even real or maybe we're missing a thousand years in history. Have you heard that one? Like maybe there wasn't, we're not even in the year 2000. Maybe, maybe we're living in a hologram and this is all contrived and there was no history. All this supposed memories and historical records were just created for a little group of us. You know, how about if you're really the only person that exists and everybody else around you is just an avatar and you're in a video game and you're, you know, <laughs> you're going to wake up one morning and find out that you've just been, <laughs> you, you know, you've been duped. Could it go that far? Well, I suppose, you know, I mean, is, is that impossible? Uh, I don't. Well, I can tell you that that's not true because I'm here and I know that, but you don't know that. So, well, we've got just so many this. I mean, how far do we go with all of this <sighs> imagining that perhaps everything we've been told is, is false? Well, today I want to talk about one specific thing, and that is the Bible. Is it truly true? Is it the Word of God? Was Jesus Christ ever born? Did he live? Did he walk the earth? Did he die? What's the message? We've talked about what the message really is. That it's a spiritual message. Now, see, I think we can extrapolate from that right off the bat. The message that's in the New Testament really is a spiritual message. I think you can come to that conclusion and be completely, absolutely certain that it is a real true message not just something somebody made up because the message is so powerful it rings true to your soul the apostle paul says we cry out abba father we groan with groanings unuttered from deep within us our spirit bears witness with his spirit that we are the, the sons of god so wh what is that saying is is that we really are the sons of god uh, okay we can therefore extrapolate that there is a god you say, Dave, that's that's pretty stretching it. I don't believe in a God now. Just because you say that doesn't mean there's a God. No, but I want you to think about that. Some guy, now, I mean, okay, we can believe there was no history and we've just been floating around in a little bubble here and we're all, you know, in this little crystal globe and the aliens are looking down on us and they're just laughing their heads off and there's nothing... You know, we're not even here. Okay, I don't, I don't, let's not go that far. I don't think that we need to do that. I mean, I, I was, I was here for a long time. I can remember my life and my father 
was genuine. He was a genuine person. My mother, I could look in their eyes. They said they had a history. They talked about their grandmothers. I, I think that, that we're really here. Okay, so now, so how far back does it go and did Jesus exist? Well, is there a God? Well, when you look at all of the, the religions of the world and you take it from the perspective that they're all different and they're all, then therefore they're all lying and then you can't believe in anything, then you would come to that conclusion. But I'm saying, look at them. They're all saying the same thing. They all have the same message. And that's what the Apostle Paul was trying to say. This is the mystery. The mystery that was hidden from the world. And it's hidden from most of us today. That we're, we're, ser we're searching for it. And he says that we are children of God. The creation groaneth and prevail until now waiting for the revealing of the sons of God. Now, look, that doesn't prove anything, but it rings true to me that there's a great plan that in the East they talk about we came here, this illusion, we came here to, you know, to go through all these rebirths. I believe there has to be a reason for it. The Bible tells us what the reason for, for it is. We, we, we partook of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil to learn by the things that we suffered. And Jesus came here to act out this drama. We're all one in Christ. And we're all experiencing the suffering that we might learn. Why was that man born blind, they asked Jesus. He said, for the glory of God to be revealed. See, I believe that's a very, very truthful statement. And I know in my heart that it explains everything. Because I am here. And there is suffering. And I see the beauty all around me. That old puppy's beautiful. He's born with a lot of instinctual habits and he, he can herd sheep and, you know, and he can hunt. And he's a good, faithful companion and he's loving and kind and there's, there's old Blue. And that tells me a lot right there. The flowers bloom in the spring, and that tells me a lot. And I put that together with everything. History tells us that the scriptures are very ancient, and they all teach us this great truth, this great esoteric wisdom. So today I want to say, is there any evidence? We, we really should entitle this video, All Points, Points Bulletin. You know, attention, scholars. Oh, the wind's coming up. I hope you guys can hear me. I really thought I could do this out here on this lake, but I, I feel the wind, and I don't know what it sounds like on the other side, but we'll try to press on here, folks. Hopefully it won't be too bad. But this is, this is a very important, very important statement we're about to make. We can now prove, after, what, 2,000 years? Perhaps they have never been able to really prove anything. I mean, Christians were telling us that, oh, well, the Bible's true because prophecy came true. Well, that, that didn't really help. But then people came along and said, well, it was written after the prophecy was finished. <laughs> or, uh, you know, well, you know, some say the prophecy's interpreted this way and others that way. And so, you know, it was difficult and people still came to a dead end on it. Um, but yet it still kept ringing true and and this story of Jesus was just beautiful and Then we found out wow, it's the same story of Buddha Krishna, you know Dionysius and Mithra and Zarathustra or whatever it's all these different The feathered quizzle quizzle, you know, they all had similar stories They all went and they died and were resurrected and it all goes back to the Egyptian Osiris who was reborn Madonna and the child. That's the story of Jesus and and Mary. And so, you know, we just had Easter. And we did a video on that and we explained what that really means. But so we have all these questions. But but what if I could prove to you that there was a man named Jesus Christ, that he really did exist, and that he died that he was resurrected, that he 
did miracles. Divine miracles. And it was testified to by real historical people outside of the Bible. So we talked about in some of my videos that this notion that there isn't any historical writings that confirm that Jesus lived, that's not true. People say, oh, Josephus is all we've got and that was interpolated. It's not true. There's, <laughs> there's absolute certain evidence that Josephus' writings are not interpolated, that, that he did speak of Jesus. And here's how you... It, 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 it amazes me that this escapes the attention of scholars and people and the stories get started. But, all right, so maybe that one little verse where he talks about Jesus could be an interpolation. We don't know, right? But then what about the whole context of Josephus' works where he talks about James's brother, the Essenes? The Essenes were the followers of John the Baptist. He mentions John the Baptist. Josephus mentions John the Baptist and James, the brother of Jesus. And then he mentions Jesus, so I would, I would suspect that regardless of whether something in there is an interpolation, the whole gist of it is that Josephus, an ancient historian, does confirm the existence of Christianity, its early beginnings, of Jesus and his family. So this is a fact. The, the Talmud talks about Jesus. And um, we have other historical writings. But, but now I want to tell you about something else. I mean, but, but before we get to that, just think about this, though. I mean, it's hard sometimes to wrap your mind about all this. But the Apostle Paul, look at his letters, for instance. Well, he talks about Jesus. Says that he came according to the flesh and that he had brothers and that there was a, a temple in Jerusalem and that the, there was a, a, a disagreement over his, you know, teachings and some wanted to go back to the law. I mean, we have all these writings. This is, I think it would be very difficult um, to 2,000 years later come up with all these documents that are letters that are preserved and you see dying people that have been murdered for their witness of Christ and they're clutching these historical documents in their hands and their, you know, whole temples and libraries were burned down and people were murdered for their testimony. And you think, well, why were these people so diligently hanging on to these teachings and these writings? And when you look at the Apostle Paul's writings, it's very difficult to imagine that this was just all made up. I mean, the, the internal evidence of the various letters of Paul, put them together with the letters of Peter and James and stuff, you can put it all together and get an historical view of that particular time. It mentions certain Caesars and mentions Pilate. And, you know, you put all of this evidence together, it's very difficult to say that somehow hundreds of years after the event, somebody just made all this up. And, you know... We find thousands of manuscripts that are of varying ages that existed in various places all over the world. I mean, there were people believing in these teachings in Egypt, some of them in Assyria, and some of them up in Europe, and all around the world. Europe and, and Russia, and we're finding out now, and I'm going to do this series coming up about the Tartars. We're going to find out that the children of Israel went all the way to Japan, China, America, we're going to prove that they are scattered into all the world. Every four corners of every, you know, that, that the children of Israel aren't just the white race or the black race, but it's all the races. And, and there's a lot we're going to go into on the coming series. But today I want to confirm to you, I want you to be able to believe and understand and know that they, we have documented evidence that Jesus really existed. And I'm going to, I'm going to reveal that document to you here in a second but but we've got before we get to that we've got Paul's writings and the apostles and they're not even concerned about you know really the Paul's not really concerned about the historicity 
of Jesus and talking about his life and things he did, but he's just going from the point of view as though he, obviously he does exist. And he's talking about, look, I'm not going to write the gospel, but I'm just an apostle. I'm coming to these congregations that have existed now for 60 years, 50, 40, 50, 60 years, and you guys are all believing in Jesus and you're, you're doing these um, things like the Lord's Supper. You've been doing it for some time now according to this man Jesus' commandment. And um, and you're doing it wrong, and I'm telling you how you should do it, and you should love one another. And by the way, um, I want the congregations to have love, and by the way, I want this, and some of you are fighting amongst yourselves, and some of you say you're a Peter, and some of you are Paul. Come on. Why would somebody write a letter to groups of people, little, little congregations and communities all over the world, up in... Corinth and Colossia and Philippi and Rome and, and Babylon and different places of the world. How did these congregations get started? Why did they all want to follow this, these apostles who all claim to be testifying of Jesus? See, where two or three witnesses are gathered, or where two or three witnesses uh, confirm something, we, we're supposed to believe that. That's, that's how our law, that's how our entire system Everything we believe, our, our, you know, our teachings, why we believe certain things. We're told that, you know, this is how we can verify in a court of law that something is so. We have witnesses. We have to have a certain amount of witnesses, and then we can believe it. A testimony. It has to be two or three, and, you know, and this and that. This is the, the standard by which we can believe things. We've done this for thousands of years, and it's suited us pretty well. So we have all of these, the Bible says, a cloud of witnesses, all these martyrs. You say, well, I don't know if these martyrs really died for Jesus. Well, look at history. There's another bunch of testimony. You know, who, are, who is this Will Durant, right? <laughs> Writing all this history that didn't happen. Who is this Josephus and Pliny and uh, all these particular individuals writing all of this, you know, the Talmud confirming it. What is all this? What is this Apostle Paul? Who is the Apostle of? Okay, so we have all of this, this great cloud of witnesses. And we have our heart, which is bearing witness with his spirit that's in us, that says we are his children, that we're not here for no reason. That this beautiful lake, flowers and the trees, oh, that's beautiful, friends. That this is a purpose here being worked out under the sun. God loves you. And he's, he, he, yes, there's a God. We know that in our heart just because we feel it. But we have evidence to support that feeling, friends. And uh, so here, here is some evidence that you probably have not heard. I mean, it, it, it just surprises me. I think it's just proof that, that basically... The world basically doesn't want you to know the truth. They want you to speculate and have some faith, but then have some doubts and to be in confusion and going back and forth and, right? I mean, but they don't really, you know, they must not really want you to know the truth or else somebody would have told you that there is a document, not even in the scriptures or in any of the Apocrypha or anything, but just historical documents that, that exist today, and it's called the Letters of Pilate, Pontius Pilate to Tiberius Caesar. Because remember, it was Pontius Pilate that was there when Jesus was being crucified, and he tried to get Jesus to, you know, he tried to tell the people, hey, you know, you want me to release Jesus? I mean, he didn't do anything wrong. And then in the end, you know, he says, well, I washed my hands of this, and he washed his hands. He said, I don't want any part of this. This man's innocent. There's no legal reason that we should put this man to death but the jews insisted many of the jews that this man was a blasphemer and he had to be put to death the sanhedrin specifically the jewish elite because um, they didn't be, well the reason is because jesus condemned their religion and he condemned their god this is what a lot of us have never been told jesus said your father is the devil and you're a liar and your law's wrong and I don't do that. Don't stone those women. But anyway, all of that happened and the Jews, that particular 
first century religion called Judaism, they didn't understand what Jesus came to do. They rejected him. And they said, crucify him. Did it really happen? Well, according to the scriptures, it was Pontius Pilate that was there at that very moment. And there's a story in the Bible about this. And we've got a document today called The Letters of Pontius Pilate to Tiberius, Syria, Tiberius Syria, Caesar. And he verifies everything that we know that the New Testament says. That Jesus was a real person, that he lived, that he was the Christ. That Pontius Pilate was there, that it was under the reign there of the Caesars, that he was put to death. And he was accused of being the king of the Jews. He did miracles. Interestingly enough, it describes what he looks like in there. So it's not like it's just, you know, somebody uh, made all this up. I mean, it's just, you know, just putting down everything that the New Testament already says, right? And just making it look like it's another document that confirms all of this. But it's got other little details that... Um, kind of like what we were saying with the Apostle Paul. I mean, he's not even trying to to give us the story of Jesus. He's just acting as though we already know that Jesus is the Christ. And he's just sending a letter to certain congregations that 50 years later were already gathered together in his name and, you know, encouraging them and instructing them better. And And so here we have a letter that assumes that You know, I mean, it's not it's not like designed to be a letter to to give us the gospel. It's just an historical document where Pontius Pilate writes to Caesar and says, hey, I I've had this res insurrection down here. The Jews are in tumult. And this guy, you know, they claimed he was uh, the king of the Jews. and They didn't like him. And they wanted him to die. And I did everything I could. And I don't know what to do. And and it gives little details like um, that Jesus had golden hair. Beautiful golden hair and a golden beard. Um, well, we'll talk about that in uh, another video, probably in that series that we're going to be doing here soon, coming up, about the Tartars and where the children of Israel went. And um, boy, that's going to be a very in interesting series. You guys got to stay tuned for that one because um, I just haven't got a chance to sit down and start doing videos again. As I'm up here, I'm trying to get my my trailer set up here and my new property and got a lot of things going on but but I'm gonna start soon but um so we'll get into that race and um, you know you've got people that for a long long time you've, you've had people saying that Israel was uh, the white race that um, they're the British, Brit, Ish. Ish is man in Hebrew and Brit is covenant. So they were the covenant man or the Saxons, the Isaac sons. Or the peninsula of the Iberians, Hebrews. Or the Danites or, you know, the country of Denmark and the Danister and the, the Don and the, you know, Danube River. And, uh, you know, on and on they, they talk about the, the Stone of Destiny and how all the kings and queens of Ireland, Scotland, and England were enthroned upon that chair that sits over this stone of scone, or the stone of destiny that's supposed to be the stone that Jacob laid his head upon, a pillar stone. And so we've had all this basically historical interpretation that perhaps the Israelites went over the Caucasus Mountains and became the Caucasians. Now, that was pretty much the only interpretation we had for a long time other than they're just scattered. We don't know where they're at. Um, now with modern days, we've got YouTube and uh, other individuals that begin doing some research and, and all various different kinds of ideas are going out to the world and it's getting more popular that people are starting to say, well, wait a minute now, uh, Israel must be the African race because uh, we've got tons of evidence that people in Africa are children of Israel and they have 
many traditions that go back to being Israelites and towns and names of Israeli Israelite names and there's the Ark of the Covenant in Ethiopia and all these different different things and biblical prophecies that were fulfilled and so without going into any of the details let me confirm to you that there is definitely much historical evidence that the black race is Israel but we just said that a very historical document the letters of Pontius Pilate to Tiberius Caesar a historical document says that Jesus had golden hair and a golden beard well that's about all I'm gonna say in this video we're gonna get into that in this upcoming series friends but the important thing is is this document the 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 letters of Pontius Pilate to Tiberius Caesar which confirms the entire, if true, confirms the entire story of the gospel that Jesus lived, gives us details about his life that we didn't know, but does confirm everything that the New Testament says. Can we, can we be confident that it's a real historical document? Yes, we can. And that's what this video is about today. We can be confident because here, here is the proof that it is a true historical document. In the second century, after Christ, there was a church father called Tertullian. And he mentions this, this very document that we're talking about, the letters of Pontius Pilate to Tiberius Caesar. So he mentions it and confirms that it exists. Now, you might say, well, we don't know, just because he mentioned it, that it, maybe it's a different document, maybe it's maybe this other one was a forgery, a fake, or we, you know, how do we know it's real? That doesn't prove it. Well, all right, but look, at least it proves that such a document existed. Now, if, if a document existed in the second century of an historical person, such as Pontius Pilate, that literally existed and was confirmed by all the Roman documents and Greek manuscripts and classic Greek writings, and so we all know that there was a Pontius Pilate and there was Caesars and this is our entire history. And if there is independent verification that this guy named Pontius Pilate wrote documents saying that Jesus was the Christ, then that, that itself, Tertullian's writings by themselves prove that Jesus really existed. But you could say that maybe Tertullian made that up if we didn't have that document. Well, we found it. Okay, well, maybe that's not the right one. So you're saying, well, I still don't believe it. Well, wait a minute. Hang on. But Tertullian doesn't just say that it existed. He tells you exactly what that document said. It says that Pilate, Pontius Pilate, confirmed that Jesus did miracles. That, you know, he was crucified. And all the things that that, that book says, he says it said. So we then confirm independently from this document we have today that Pontius Pilate did write a document that confirmed that Jesus existed and died under his watch. And that he washed his hands of it. That he saw that this man did miracles. That he spoke of beautiful things from his father and he raised the dead and he was resurrected the third day and all the things that we're told in the New Testament we have now confirmed from various sources and not just Tertullian but other church fathers mentioned this document of Pontius Pilate to Tiberius Caesar so regardless of whether or not the one we have today that's that you can read and there's no way nobody can disprove that that document is not factual and true but therefore you know we might assume it's true, but okay, you that by the same token, you can't prove because we don't have a, an actual manuscript dated to 200 after Christ or 100 AD. So we don't have an actual manuscript. So it could be a forgery. But since we have the church fathers saying that ex, a manuscript like that did exist and they tell us what it said and it 
it's the same thing as this one says, then it doesn't really matter if we've got the actual document. We just know that one existed that confirms all this. And it confirms that Jesus lived. So, anyway, I think that's kind of the way I wanted to um, put this forward so that you guys would uh, be able to then go in and, and look at this for yourself. Go on Google and look up this document and read it for yourself. It's not real long. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful testimony to the life and death of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. That he was more than just a man, but he could do great miracles and that he was raised the third day. And it should bring tears to your eyes. It did mine when I first heard about this because I've seen a lot of things that have confirmed to me that my faith and my Father in Heaven is true. And one of the th reasons why I believe in my Father in Heaven and His Son Jesus Christ is this beautiful lake right here. And these beautiful puppies. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. There's a big old purpose being carried out here on planet Earth. And the star of the show is that Christ in you, the hope of glory. And we can be sure that our Father in Heaven loves us. And He's provided a way out for us. And he's guiding and directing us and loving us. And he's got us and he's not going to let go. And we can hold on to our faith because it's true. We're not following crazy fables and deceptions, the Apostle Peter says. But Peter, he says, I was an eyewitness of his majesty. And Peter says, I'm testifying to you. Jesus really was the Christ. And the Apostle Paul gave his testimony. And James and all the apostles and all the many martyrs. We have such a cloud of witnesses. And even, yes, Pontius Pilate gave his testimony. Which is a pretty big deal. So anyway, friends, I'm going to go ahead and go and get this uploaded. I really hope you guys have a great great week and a great weekend coming up we'll get back to you guys soon we'll see you later have a good one